So you will have heard lots um, in the media, lots of rumor going around about um, symptomatic and asymptomatic testing and lots about these sort of rapid tests um, that are being deployed throughout um, the UK um, and some down in Cornwall um, and possibly the Isles of Scilly moving forward. So I thought it'd be a really good idea if, if I talk to you a bit about what's the difference between symptomatic and asymptomatic testing and then what are these rapid tests, um, what are they used for um, and, and why would we want to use them or not want to use them in certain circumstances? Um, so, so just talking about symptomatic testing, actually, when you've got symptoms, it's, it's more likely that we're going to pick up um, whether you've got COVID or not. Um, and so that's the really the best time to test and the best time to test with a PCR test. Um, a good one, really good swab in the nose and throat, um, whether you're doing it yourself or, or someone is, is doing the test for you. Um, and that one has the most reliability. It's more likely to pick up whether you've got COVID or not. Um, and we've got really, really rapid testing on Isles of Scilly. So when you request a test, um, that test is deployed to you, gets done and goes right out as soon as possible to get to the lab on the mainland um, and while, while you'll be self-isolating along with your household. So it's super important that if you've got symptoms that you get in touch with Keep Silly Safe and we make sure that we get you a test. Asymptomatic testing is a really interesting one and really, really difficult. This is, um, COVID is a disease that um, might have up to a third of people infected um, showing no symptoms at all um, and the rest, uh, majority will have really mild symptoms. Um, you know, it's those really vulnerable and sometimes people we won't won't be able to pick out of a crowd, but um, who would get really severe complications. But vast majority, very mild symptoms, but possibly a third with no symptoms. So, of course, asymptomatic testing is a really good question. Why would we do it? When would we do it? Um, so it's it's a good one, but it's really difficult because it doesn't give you a license to then say that you don't have COVID because you're less likely to pick up whether someone is positive if you do a test when they're asymptomatic. There's lots of science fun and games in there about why that's the case. It could be that you have a higher or lower viral load. That just means more or less particles of the virus in your body. If you're really curious about that, definitely give it a Google around. There's lots of stuff out there, but really what we want to do is make the situation so that if we're testing, we're gonna get what we're looking for. We wouldn't wanna test people for whom we didn't think would, would have it. So it wouldn't be something that we use as a blanket testing um, scenario. We want to use it very strategically and it's really important that we understand why we would do that strategically. And um, the effectiveness of asymptomatic testing is really depending on when that person gets tested. So um, if they've got it and no symptoms, but they will have had it for 10 days or more, it's really unlikely that, that you will pick it up anyway in terms of the testing. Um, and it could be early on in the, in the um, infection and you've not got enough virus in you yet to pick up um, through asymptomatic testing anyway. So it sounds a bit silly. It is really complex, but there are instances where asymptomatic testing is, is recommended. And we're starting to do those things in Cornwall at the moment and considering how we can roll that out on silly. So care homes are an example, other important infrastructure, but it's certainly not a one-off. Um, and it's something that's got to be regularly done and in between those tests we've got to be assured that people are still following those prevention activities, distancing, hand hygiene and making sure that we're masking up um, as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, just because you get an asymptomatic test and you come back negative, as I say, doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have it. Um, you will have heard about these rapid tests called lateral flow tests, um, and these are a really good tool. Now, they're very different from PCR tests. In some instances, they're not quite as accurate, um, so we've got to be really careful about how we use them, but they can be another really great tool in our toolbox um, to prevent the spread of coronavirus. So, you know, examples of that are, as I said, we're using some asymptomatic testing um, with lateral flow devices um, in some care homes at the moment, um, testing visitors coming in, um, and we're expanding that. You might have heard about schools are going to be asked to be doing testing in the new year. Um, so there are ways we can do that, but it's regularly scheduled. It's a very, very rigid standard operating procedure for how those might be used. Um, and again, it doesn't test you out 
of having COVID. So if you get a negative result, actually, you could still have it. You just not might, might not be infectious enough for us to pick it up yet. So you still have to adhere to those prevention messages. If you do pick it up, actually, with lateral flow tests, it's probably pretty likely that you've got it um, because it picks up those highly infectious people. Um, in theory, that's what the science is telling us at the moment, um, but has to be followed up with the proper PCR test. Um, so lateral flows are great in some ways, but also a bit a bit burdensome in the fact that you've got to have a few tests to make sure you confirm. And if you come back with a positive lateral flow test, you still have to self-isolate um, until you get your PCR confirmation. OK, so it's there's lots of different things going on in the testing world at the moment. You'll hear lots and lots about it. That is sort of a brief summary of what's going on in testing. On Sillies, the testing is just so good and just so rapid um, and there's lots and lots of support out there for you if you've got symptoms. So still, if you've got symptoms, make sure you're requesting a test. Um, if not, and you're someone who might be in, in one of these areas where we would do some asymptomatic testing, keep your eyes and ears open. We'll start talking about that more as we move forward, um, but, but unlikely that we would do it everywhere for everyone at this point, but it's, it's just another tool um, in our toolbox to help um, protect us from coronavirus and prevent the spread of coronavirus if we start to get more cases. Thank you.